horses? Who loads easily? Who loads, who has a hard time loading? Okay, let's bring him first. Chris, I'm gonna let you handle your horse. Somebody else hold on to him. Get him loaded. Remember to stay to the side. A lot of horses will drive in. A lot of horses will not. How many horses would you say percentage-wise do we have to leave behind? Quite a few. Yeah. Day fire, we ended up leaving a lot in Lockwood because they would not load. They would not load. This is not the time for training. A lot of people are so used to, and I'm not, this is not about closing in or what you do once you load. This is just about loading itself. A lot of people are so used to their own animals that they've worked with and trained with that when this happens, the natural response is to try to work with them and train them. Chris is working with his horse to get her. her. Hey. It's a him. Give him the load. You want to try to stay on the side, try to guide them in, even if you have to step in. Horses and loading. There are other measures. Yes, Earl? You never turn and face the horse. You keep walking straight. Walk, keep them to the side, walk straight. Your second attempt and only other attempt that you want to do is have a flag. Keep a flag in your trailer. Have your partner encourage with the flag. Make sure you have the horse to the side and you're holding it properly. Try to drive. If you don't like that, I do and it works. As long as you're safe enough back. But so look forward, your partner, if the horse isn't too crazy, moves the horse to the side, maybe uses the flag a little, out of kicking range, pretend there's a flag, horse doesn't respond, five minutes, horse isn't loaded, you're done. Five minutes you guys, it is really, and now, if that's the only ranch and you don't have to run around and pick up other horses, if you have no other horses and you have plenty of trailers, you can take a little more time, use your judgment, but if you're going to multiple places and have to use multiple trailers, five minutes, that's it. When you have your horse that doesn't load, if you have horses, again, you have the leaders and the followers, try to load the leader first because the horses will follow. Do not try to load the weaker of the horses first. There's a chain reaction there with that. When you try to load the weaker of the horses that doesn't load, the other horses are gonna look at them and go, maybe there's a reason for this. So you always wanna try to load the more, the, the better the herd leader because the others will follow. Now, next, loading itself, who's coming? Let's load Thunder. Thunder? Come on, Thunder. Erica. Look, every horse people always answer when you cluck at them, huh, Allie? <laughs> and some people look at me and want to give me the finger. <laughs> uh, Allie, she responds. Come on, Allie. Horses like Thunder, though, like he'll collapse if he's got the divider bar up. So yeah, we're just going to do know, a demonstration. Like we're not, and we're not going to even cl close it. So. When you're, when you're loading your horses, don't close anyone in the trailer. Keep, you can go in with the horse if they're safe. If they're not safe, you're not loading them. Do not close the trailer while somebody's still in there. Come on, Bubba. All I'm going to do is show how to hand it off. Good boy. Hand the lead line through. That's what your partner is going to do. Tie outside the trailer. Use a half hitch or some type of quick release knot because you want to be able to pull and go. 
Don't do that if you're married to your partner. You want to keep them tight. Tom still hasn't learned. When you go to unload, make sure the lead line is untied. Have the person go in. If you have a horse that's going to explode out of the trailer, you want to have some level of control. It may not be easy, but it's going to slow it down. Once that person has hold of that horse and they make sure the door is open, they can take the lead line, feed it through. We have had situations where we've had to use a lunge line, hook it to the horse, and as the horse came out, you fed it through and let the horse come out. And sometimes they've exploded. But you have some level, even if it's minimal, versus going in the trailer, having no control, having the horse spin around on you, hit you, now you're hurt, and the horse is running around the fairgrounds chasing the race cars. We have horses with drop windows, and what we do is we keep the window cracked a little bit, and we tie the line in back. I don't tie it forward because then you're going to break your windows, but you tie it back, and the pressure is usually this way, so there's nothing that's going to put pressure on the window. It's just the frame. It's already tied off, so you already have the support of the window. Well, with something like this, actually, that's a real, Harold, if, if you are so close that the sparks are flying that close to the trailer, you're not going to be there. Be <laughs> we are not going to risk your safety. I mean, seriously, we have had situations, and it's terrible. It is terrible to watch, but your safety comes first. We're not going to ask you to drive through flames. Crack the window a little bit, enough for the lead line to get through. Make sure you don't have food, but still, it's going to be much safer to have that lead come out. If you have that many sparks and embers coming that close to the trailer, get out. Or don't, we're not going to ask you to go into it. We'll ask you to go in when it's safe. When it comes to trailering animals, <laughs> there's livestock, there's cattle, there's horses, and then there's pigs and goats. Last time we had Alan bring his trailer that had the pigs in it. Horses are going to smell that. Ideally, I would like to have a couple people allocated just for pigs and goats and llamas versus just handling horses because that's going to be the easiest way to get the animals to load. A lot of times when they smell that stuff, they are going to take one sn good sniff and go, hell no. <laughs> and then you're going, one horse left behind, give me another one that can handle pigs. And the other one's going to go, hell no. And then you what? None of them are going to load. Now, if you have really good horses, I like to tell people during clinics, when I do my clinics, if you have an opportunity to get goats, pigs, llamas, and get them introduced to the animals, do it. It makes our lives much easier. When you guys go out, and this is a situation I've never really had happen, uh, fortunately too often because we have multiple trailers, the p owners are there. If the owners are not there, you figure out, look at the situation. What horses are stalled next to each other? What horses are in the same pasture? Try to keep those animals together. If you can't keep those animals together, you ask and find out of the group of multiple trailers, who are the best horsemen, women? Because women are always better than men and stronger. Right, Dean? So find out who your strongest of the team is, who the most experienced. And you want to rely on them not only to help handle that animal, but also to make the judgment call. Because they're going to know when the situation is too dangerous to try to pursue.